top 10 beautiful cars. Just kidding! Today we'll talk about ugliest cars in the world. Let's begin! Number 1. Chrysler PT Cruiser In contrast to a lot of the cars here, the Chrysler PT Cruiser was in roundly mocked upon release. In fact, reception was very favorable, with several including US outlet Motor Trend naming it the car of the year. Chrysler sold plenty of them in US, and a reasonable number in the UK, considering how uncompetitive a package was over here. A big problem for the cruiser, however, was its failure to snare the younger, cooler buyers Chrysler was after. We can see why the PT Cruiser took elements of the shrinking Chrysler prone to cruiser concept and granted them onto a lofty, blob like body shell. The tall grill and bulbous wheel arches recall customs of the 50s, but only very vaguely. Even worse is the convertible version, which looks ungainly roofed up or down. Anyways, people, the less said about the driving experience, the better. Number 2. Sanyang Rodeos Sanyang has launched its fair share of questionably styled products over the years. But one rises above all other to take dubious honor of being not just the Korean firm's ugliest ever car, but perhaps the most hideous motor in history. Interestingly, its designer Kang Grinley used to be head of the Royal College of Art Transportation Design School, an institution which counts Ian Colum and other car designs greats amongst its former pupils. The story goes that Greenlee took inspiration from luxury yards when penning the Rodeos, but unfortunately, that concept didn't work so well for a large, reasonably priced and cheaply made MPVs. 3. Pontiac Aztec Many modern SUVs claim to be lifestyle vehicles ideal for those who enjoy outdoor pursuits, but all are outdone by the Aztec in this regard. Here is a car with a removable drink cooler and a Range Rover-like split tailgate complete with boot-mounted audio system that controls for anyone sitting on it when it's folded out. Unfortunately, all anyone could focus on with Aztec was the way it looked. It was deliberately styled to be bold and aggressive, but the gawky results were almost universally derided. The Aztec is such an enduring laughing stock that it was cast as the daily driver of one Walter White in acclaimed TV show Breaking Bad providing a metaphor for a man's life that hadn't quite worked out as hoped yet. 4. Subaru Tribeca In the later half of Nautis, Subaru referred the aviation history of brand owners Fuji, heavy industries with a three-part grill. The theme appeared on a couple of key car and a whole key Subaru Impreza. But, well, it looked its worst on the Tribeca SUV. Even the word gupping seems to be kind. Plans to build a far better looking version branded as the Saab 96X were scrapped when then Saab owner General Motors sold its stake in Fuji Heavy Industries. But, the styling wrongs of the Tribeca were eventually righted in 2007. A heavily facelifted version was revealed with a far more conventional grille arrangement. 5. Ford Scorpio MK2 Underneath, the second-generation Scorpio doesn't deviate all that much from its predecessor. You wouldn't know it from the outside, of course. 
foretold to differentiate the new Scorpio from the Sierra aesthetically and for better or worse, the blue oval centrally succeeded. The motor impress was quick to give MK second styling a good kicking, particularly its face, which looked like it had already had several and was frequently likened to that of a frog. Its plump, rounded red didn't win itself many fans either. Ford's midlife refresh improved the situation slightly, but the Scorpio remained a shorty attempt at bringing a slice of retro Americana to Europe. Number 6. Fiat Multipla We shouldn't be too hard on the original Multipla. For starters, it was innovative, being shorter than its rivals, yet able to carry six thanks to three Abra seating in the front. And it's commendable that Fiat managed to come up with something that genuinely stood out amidst the generic MPV masses back then. It's just that the multipla went about it the wrong way. From the globular chunk of metal at the base of the white screen to the huge windows, which gave excellent visibility but an awkwardly tall glass house. There's just a lot going on here. As Auto Express once noted, when the midlife facelift came along, success with rarely come to a family car that not only scares children, but makes their parents wins too. Seven, Dodge Nitro. Dodge made a bold move by bringing the Nitro to the UK, but this didn't really pay off. The SUV wasn't exactly a sales hit. The Nitro's chrome festoon, slob-like front end, and cartoonishly flared from wheel arcs look ridiculous enough in its home country. The styling is far from the Nitro's only issue. A close relative of the Jeep Liberty, the Nitro doesn't ride very well, has a poorly made and cheap feeling interior, and was offered with a whipping 3.7 liter V6 which somehow splatters out just 203 horsepower. The four-cylinder petrol isn't brilliant either. Most buyers here sensibly went for the slightly better 2.8 liter diesel engine, although buying any nitro is a decision that's difficult to understand whatever's under the bonnet. Eight. Mini Cooper. The Mini range has been characterized by aggressive expansion, which arguably went a little too far with the coupe. Up to the bottom of the glass house, it's all as per the second generation Mini hatchback, but from there it's all changed and not all the best. The Mini Cooper got shorter windows, a much more steply ranked windscreen and a most unusual of all, a roof which resembles a backwards one baseball cap. This gives a button-heavy design which combined with a downgrade in practically thanks to its two-seat arrangement failed to win over many buyers. 9. Hyundai Coupe MK1 Facelift While some facelifts do a great job of fixing design issues, some do the opposite. In 1991, Hyundai refreshed its coupe called the cheap run in some markets and ruined it, <laughs> fortunately. Granted, the original one wasn't a remarkable looking two-door, but it was reasonably attractive in its own way. But the updated model, oh dear. Gone was the original car's understated fascia, replaced with a drastically different front end, with an ugly quad headlamp arrangement made worse by a pair of bonnet humps leading up from the inner pair. And the last one, 
Number 10. Mitsuoka Orochi. No one buys a Mitsuoka to blend in, but even so, the Orochi goes overboard in its quest to look distinctive, abandoning the niche Japanese firm's usual shtick of making coach-built oddities inspired by old British sports cars, the Orochi features a baseball platform, albeit powered by a V6 borrowed from Toyota and looks unlike no other car on the planet. The Orochi features an overabundance of lines, the face of a confused fish and a general sense of weirdness. Well, with 231 horsepower, feeding a 5-speed automatic normally found in an SUV, the Orochi takes 7 seconds to go from 0 to 60 meters per hour. This does, unfortunately, mean that you're unlikely to drive away fast enough to prevent people from spotting you behind the wheel. And that's it. Enjoy the view of these ugly cars.